Hey folks, my name is John Daly. I'm the mayor of Tallahassee. Thanks for joining us on this Facebook Live uh, uh, conversation. I want to remind everybody, be safe out there while the coronavirus is making its way across our community. Uh, we have been pushing out a lot of information about what's going on, what the city is doing. Remember our top two priorities, focused on the health, safety, and welfare of all citizens, and also keeping the municipal services up. And let me remind you one more time that if you are having any consternation about paying your utility bills, do not worry. Call us, we're gonna work with you. We will not shut off anybody's utilities. I'm joined today uh, by my great friend, Dr. Jay Reeve, who's president and CEO of the Appalachian uh, Mental Health Center here in Tallahassee. For those of you that are familiar, Appalachian Center is the hospital in Tallahassee that concentrates on mental health and behavioral health. Uh, full disclosure, I am a proud board member and have served as chair of the board of the Appalachian Center. You know, Jay, I called you yesterday. First of all, thanks. This is a little weird because of the social distancing, but we're <laughs> going to do the best we can. We're going to stick with the six feet, yeah. You know, you watch what's been going on globally mm -hmm. with the pandemic, and you watch what's been going on across the United States, state of Florida, in our community. And I do think that we're doing a great job getting information out about physical health, mm -hmm. proper hygiene, social distancing. Let's try to suppress the spread of the, of the virus. But I was, I was yesterday thinking, and I gave you a call and we had a great conversation. There is a conversation that needs to be had and we're gonna start it today. Mm -hmm. And I'm using my position of Mayor of Tallahassee and your position as president of the Appalachian Center to talk about mental health and the importance of paying attention to our mental health during state of emergencies. The second part of this conversation is how do we talk to our kids? How do we talk to the children in our community about what's going on? All of us are a little on edge. All of us are a little bit nervous we see that play out in children as well. But let's start first and foremost. I mean, I don't think it's a big secret that during you know interesting times like we're in right now, um, mental health plays a significant role in our overall health. You know, the more stressed we get, we're not at our best, mm -hmm. uh, and it impacts all aspects of our life. You know, from your perspective, just generally, what do you see when communities are under state of emergency uh, during situations like this with mental health? Well, you know, it's a great question there, and let me start by thanking you for initiating this yep. conversation. Hey, here we go. There All we right. go, because this is the thing that you need to do is to talk about the impact of states of emergency and other kind of disasters on mental health. One of the big things that happens, and it's one of those things that's so obvious that people forget to comment on it, is that the level of anxiety raises pretty considerably, and I'm, I'm gonna call it anxiety rather than stress, sure. because that's the specific medical term. Sure. So when people get anxious, here's what happens physically. Your blood pressure rises, your pulse rate rises, the level of adrenaline surging in your system goes up. It's the fight or flight response. Sure. So people get prepared to take action. Now, one of the things about a pandemic that's interesting is that we're not really talking about anything that's different in nature than the flu or other infectious diseases. We're talking about something that's way different in scope. So what's happening is that there's an illness out there that's making people sick and that people are at great risk for and people's natural response to that is to become anxious, to prepare to do something. But as you've been so eloquent about, and as the messaging that's been pushed out has been so eloquent about, really the right thing here is to do nothing in the sense of keeping social distance, staying home, keeping yourself close to home, and keeping your kids close to home. That's hard for people, sure. right? That's hard for people because there's no action to be taken here, sure. sort of an absence of action. So the best thing in my mind that you can do is have conversations about it, but keep as part of those conversations, how do you de-stress? Sure. How do you reduce anxiety? Sure. Well, and you know, you think about it, mental health is not something that we're used to talking about just in general. Right. We should be talking about mental health, um, you know, during normal times because either all of us personally were related to someone or we know someone that's dealing with mental health issues. But during these interesting times, it's really important. As you just pointed out, it's something I'd never thought about. 
you know, your mental health actually has a significant impact on your physical health. Absolutely. And it can lower your immune system, yes. make you more susceptible. So it's very important that we concentrate on it. I'm joined by Dr. Jay Reeves, president of the Appalachian Center. We are Facebook Live, and by the way, we are taking questions. Please submit your questions and we'll read them aloud. We'll answer them. We're scheduled to go 30 minutes, but we'll go for as long as we have people uh, participating and asking questions. So, Jay, I do know also that during these type of times, um, you know, um, domestic violence rises. Yes. Uh, child abuse rises. Yes. It's very important that we pay attention um, to how we're interacting with people and we don't get frustrated. You know, sure, we've all seen the Facebook jokes about, oh, my family's already driving me crazy. It's only day two. And some of it's kind of funny, but the underlying message is mental health domestic abuse, child abuse is not funny, and we need to work extra hard, especially when you know we're encouraging everyone to stay home. Right. Uh, you're spending a lot of uh, concentrated time. And I also think it's important not to get stuck in what I'm calling, and my wife and I have talked about this quite a bit, the mundane. Mm -hmm. you know, don't just wake up, sit on the couch, watch television for 12 hours. You gotta have some structure, especially for kids. Yeah. And I want you to concentrate, I want you to answer that, but you know, you gotta be creative um, mm -hmm. or else you're going to fall into a rut. It could lead mm -hmm. to depression, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. and other aspects. Comment on the importance of making sure families, individuals, but also children have, have structure. I think that's an excellent point. It's one of the things that folks don't think about enough in situations like this, right? Because we associate staying home with being either sick or being on vacation. For a lot of folks right, right now, staying home is an effort to not be sick. But mm -hmm. what that means is that there's a lot of folks staying home right now who feel completely healthy, who have their usual level of energy. In sure. fact, that energy's jacked up a little bit because of the anxiety and the stress of what's going on. So if you think about what your work day is like, or my work day is like, or a school day is like, there's plenty of structure. It's packed with meetings. They're packed with classes. They're packed with things you have to do at work. For a lot of folks, that's suddenly been taken away. For all kids, that's suddenly been taken away. And to your point, just kind of vegging out is not in the long run going to be helpful. Now, right. it's, right, it's important to take breaks, but those breaks should be centered within a structure of what are you going to do through the course of the day. And for parents, that actually becomes one of your number one priorities right now is how are you going to structure the day for your kids? What are you going to do for this hour? What are you going to do for the next hour? Right. How are you going to build that into the kind of routine that sort of mimics what's happening in school? Sure. So, sure. yeah. Well, and you know, it, it's no secret. Children would much rather have our one-on-one, -on -one, undivided attention, doing a project, shooting hoops, mm -hmm. hanging out in the backyard, doing a craft, than just sitting in front of the TV. Absolutely. And just watching TV. I mean, yeah. as unhealthy as it is. You know, and we've taken great strides in our family to put together some structure. We're trying to exercise every day, Absolutely. which we should be doing anyway. Right. But we've really made a conscious effort to get out take walks, ride bikes, um, you know, Excellent. get the body moving so that we're just not sitting around. So what are some of the signs that we should be looking for um, in our children to, to see if there are mental health issues that are developing? Well, okay, there's a, there's a couple of ways to answer that. Um, any conditions of heightened anxiety and heightened stress are going to cause underlying mental health issues to get worse. So if your folks who are, or if your kids who are tending towards depression, or tending towards anxiety, or tending towards other mental health problems, you can expect those to get a little worse in an atmosphere of anxiety. That's what anxiety does. So what you'd look for is either an exacerbation or a heightening of symptoms that you know to be there anyway, or some, there's some pretty simple physical tells, and these include um, what's called day-night reversal. So trouble sleeping, okay. trouble sleeping at the right time, or conversely, too much sleeping, kids napping through the day in a way that they ordinarily wouldn't. Um, Heightened temper, that's gonna be a big one, right? Is Got it. kids being on edge and sort of snapping about things that they ordinarily would let go. Now, now we're not just talking about the normal sibling no. 
No, <laughs> bickering that's, back and forth because right. that's going to happen. Well, Lord knows it happens in our family too, just like everybody else. So, but you're talking about above and beyond. Yeah, there's a real important concept I think that parents and everybody should keep in mind with this, and that's the concept of baseline behavior. This is a real, you know, frequent topic of conversation in the medical and the psychiatric world, and the idea is you can generally say, here's how your kid generally acts. Here's Johnny acting like Johnny. Right. We're not talking about Johnny acting like Johnny. We're act talking about Johnny acting like Johnny times five. Right. And that's a place where things are going above baseline and that's your cue to say, maybe we need a little more structure. Maybe we need to actively do some things to de-stress, which by the way, exercise is a great thing. Yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna get to that best. in a second. I'm gonna ask you in a second some, some specifics that we can do as well. But I think those are the tells when, you know, listen, you've got normal life has been sort of upended by this thing anyway. So what you're looking for is the degree, there's, so there's gonna be a little variance from normal behavior, but the degree of that variance, the degree of change in what you're seeing at dinner time, at bedtime, interactions with siblings, interactions with parents, that's what you wanna cue into as a parent. And if you see big swings in either direction, too much anger, too much passivity, too much sleeping, not enough sleeping, that's your cue to say, we need to step up the intervention here. We need to do something a little different. Sure. And while we've been concentrating on children, talk to me also about adults. Okay. Okay. Our spouses, our family that might be under the same roof with us right now, our partners uh, that might be under the same roof with us. Well, you know, what should we be kind of monitoring? And, and, and also for our own self, what should we be looking for in our own behavior? Well, like because uh, it's real easy to get into a routine. I mean, folks, we're talking about being at home for an extended period of time. So what should we be paying attention to, Jay? Well, I think that it's similar to what you're paying attention to with your kids, but in a way, it's heightened for adults, right? Because for adults, for your partner, your spouse, for us, we're watching the news. Right. We're watching CNN. We've right. got these anxiety-provoking inputs that are coming in, and we typically don't have parents that we're turning to and saying, tell me everything's gonna be all right. right. So we have to shoulder that burden ourselves and yeah we're going to have some of the same things the sleeplessness or the too much sleep the bouts of anxiety one of the things i've noticed and this is both in terms of folks i've talked to in the community and in myself are periods of mild what's called derealization and derealization is the sense of this can't really be happening. This feels kind of like we're in a movie or something because it's so different from what we're all used to. Jay, it's the first day of spring in Tallahassee. You look out the window, right. it's absolutely gorgeous. Yes, it is. You sit at home and you're looking outside and you're like, there's nothing wrong. You know, we usually can compare stuff like this to like a hurricane. Exactly. Where there's a, there's a physical event. You, right. you see the storm come through and unfortunately you see the destruction afterwards. What we're seeing is a beautiful spring day. That's right. And after so many days of sitting at home doing nothing, you're, you're going, there, there's nothing going on. Right. There's, there's nothing happening. Why are we doing this? Right. And yet there's so much happening. Listen, I'll give you an example of this. So I drove downtown this morning to come to this taping. Yes, sir. And uh, I gave myself the usual amount of time that I allot on a Friday morning at around, you know, 8, 30, 9 o'clock to get down into Central Tallahassee. I got down here about 20 minutes earlier than right. I thought I was going to because there's no one on the roads. Right. And the, 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 just the impact of that, you know, I knew that was the case, but I hadn't seen it sure. until now. So I think for a lot of folks, that's going to be sort of the, the, the cue is things seem like they should be normal, but right. they're really not. So the things to look for are going to be those senses of derealization, changes in sleep, changes in um, eating, and the other big one, yeah. especially for adults. I was about to ask you right, about, yeah. For adults, it's gonna be irritability. Yeah. That's the big one. That's yeah. where anxiety goes, especially for folks who don't have diagnosed anxiety or depression disorders. It tends to go to irritability. So that's, that's the big thing to watch, and that's something that partners and spouses can check each other on a little bit of like, wait a second, you wouldn't have blown up at this thing two weeks ago. Sure. So why are you blowing up at it now? Sure. And, you know, let's get really touchy here um, and really dive in. Alcoholism. Yes. Substance abuse. Yes. I can only imagine from a lay person's perspective, 
you know, when you see interesting times like this, uh, probably the rate of alcoholism goes up, um, substance abuse goes up, you know, talk to me. Absolutely. So those fall into the kind of symptoms that I was talking about earlier because they're ways of coping. They're not good ways of coping, but they're still ways of coping. And for a lot of folks who have substance use disorders, those emerge even in less interesting times out of an attempt to control unwelcome feelings or unwelcome anxiety. Well, you have a, a sort of underlying theme of oh my God, what's gonna happen in the future right now? That's gonna be something folks are gonna default to unless they're very careful about it. And the thing I'd encourage real strongly is if folks are in recovery and in ongoing recovery, this is absolutely a time to, if you're involved in NA or AA, talk to your sponsor, call your sponsor. Doesn't have to be face to face, but keep in touch. Check in, absolutely. Check in. Yeah. Absolutely, I'm joined by Dr. Jay Reeve, the president and CEO of the Appalachia Center, which is the mental health facility here in Tallahassee. Uh, mental health and behavioral health Absolutely. here in Tallahassee. Jay, we pump out information all the time and phone numbers all the time for physical health yes. with the coronavirus. Yes. What is a great phone number here in Tallahassee? If you need to talk to somebody, you're at home, you don't know where to turn to, what, what's a good number to call? So we've got several of them. Um, the best, most immediate one is 211. 211. So 211 Big Bend is Great organization. staffed 24-7. Great got organization. counselors on staff. Um, you can also call us and we have counselors, masters level counselors, staffed and ready 24-7. Excellent. So we are ready to help and we're ready to respond with, really with any question at all. Right. And you know what? 211 is, is, is the easy number to remember. Yes, it is. Incredible organization. They can also put, put whoever in direct touch with Appalachia yeah, Center. Which they do well. every day. And right. go check out the Appalachia Center website yes. for all the information that's at listed as Appalachiacenter well. AppalachiaCenter.org. Right. And we are Facebook Live. Feel free to send in your questions. And I know we got a couple of questions that are coming in in just a second. Um, Real quick, before we get to this question, tell me the importance of modeling behavior as an adult for kids, because they feed off of us. Yes. If, if they see you know, mom or dad or uncle or grandmother stressed out, how are they gonna respond? Well, this is, it's a great question and that's a crucial issue. It's a crucial issue during less interesting times too, right? Because as anybody as kids know, kids watch you very, very closely. They right. may not always do exactly what you're doing, but they're always taking account of what you're doing. So if parents can model calm and model a sense of, yeah, things may be worrisome, but we kind of got this, that's going to help kids feel safe enough to not spin out of control. Sure, and we're trying to limit actually um, the amount of news yes. that we're watching on television yes. or getting in uh, to the house of what the kids are being exposed to right now. Look, I, in my position, I'm in constant contact and have to be, right. but I'm very conscious of how we receive that information um, so we're not just watching the nightly news 24-7 on TV. So also, talk. To, how do I talk to my kids? I got a okay. fifth grader. I got a right. third grader. They're old enough and smart enough, because they're like their mama, they're smart enough to understand, <laughs> you know, we have a global pandemic. Right. Uh, people have died right. because of this. This, you know, gets into the conversation of how do you talk about death mm -hmm. with your children, but, but not to that extent yet. Just how do we talk about what's going on in our community? We have a couple of confirmed cases in our community. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to have more. And how do we talk to our children about what's going on? Well, excellent question. And I think there's two things to bear in mind, right? First thing is the developmental level of your kid. So if you're talking to a five-year-old who's scared by something they see on TV. The message is different, yeah. It's a different message, right? The difference, the message is, well, you know, this is why we're staying home. This right. is why we're limiting, you know, play dates and things just to keep everybody safe. For older kids, obviously, there's a little more complexity, but you gotta be aware of that. Cause, and, and the main thing you wanna do is not to overwhelm younger kids with too much information that's not in their purview. Sure. It, fortunately, the thing about the discussion about the pandemic is it's something that in some ways is very simple. There's a lot of sickness going around. We're trying to take steps 
to keep that contained. We're going to keep everybody as safe as much as we can. And yeah, there are some folks who passed away, and just like there always are, and probably more will because of this, but we're going to do everything we can to stay safe. Kids from a very early age understand the concept of getting sick. Sure. So it's a, you know, in, in contrast, I remember a few years ago uh, after the 9-11 attacks, and there was a lot of questions about how do you talk to kids about things like 9-11 and global terrorism because they're seeing these images on TV of the Twin Towers going down. That was a hard conversation. It's hard to figure out how to talk to a six-year-old about that. This is different. This is. There's an illness going around. We want to make sure everybody stays safe until we figure out how to deal with it. Sure. Got a great question from uh, one of our participants here. Question is, should I ask my therapist to move our sessions digitally? Interesting question because, you know, here all the information coming out of the city, the county, the state, and the federal government is we need to stay home, mm -hmm. you know, social distancing, um, but yet we understand the need that uh, you might need to also speak to your therapist. What do you think? Well, I tell you what. I actually think it's a great idea, mm -hmm. um, and it's an individual decision. I don't think it's something that has to happen for each patient or each therapist, and it depends what your therapist's practice is. It depends, you know, how you're talking to your therapist, but ultimately, my understanding is social distancing, limiting of social face-to-face -face contact is a good thing for stopping the spread of the pandemic, so I think it's absolutely the good, a good thing to talk to your therapist about. now. Interesting piece of information on this front. One of the things that the federal government's been doing and the state government has been doing have been easing restrictions on, not to get too technical about this, but on what constitutes a billable hour. Sure. So for a number of insurance carriers historically, digital contact or telephone contact hasn't counted as something that you can bill, which is something you know you need to kind of think about as, as somebody who's engaged in therapy for a living. That's getting eased. So my guess is that you're going to find it a lot easier to be able to set up a situation where you're talking remotely or talking digitally with your therapist than you would have in the past. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. You know, that's an interesting conversation for another day, just the nature of the industry moving to telemedicine. Oh, yes. And that's a conversation that we should have as well. And by the way, y'all are doing an incredible job in our community, Thank you. At, our, our, at our hospitals, at the clinics at Appalachia Center, at the Kearney Center with the homeless. Um, thank you for everything that you're doing. Well, I'm joined by Jay Reeve, you, President and CEO of the Appalachia Center, the Mental Health Behavioral Health Hospital here in Tallahassee. I want to remind you that the number at the Appalachia Center is 800-342-0774. 800-342-0774. Also, feel free to call 211. 211 of the Big Ben is an incredible organization. They have counselors 24-7. So those are two great resources right there. The Appalachia Center, 800-342-0774 or 211-211. Another question. It's a great question. Uh, I have a nephew that's graduating from high school this year. And the question is, how do high school or college students, some who are graduating this year, cope with everything that's going on? I mean, you think about it from a, from a, a graduate's perspective. You know, their yeah. senior year trips are being canceled, uh, spring yeah. break canceled, graduation ceremonies are being canceled. I mean, for a lot of us, that's a rite of passage yes. that you participate in these events. Um, and it really kind of brings closure to one point of your mm -hmm. academic career as you're moving on. And it causes a, a lot of frustration, a lot mm -hmm. of disappointment. Um, you know, athletes that were going to play their last semester mm -hmm. of a spring sport now won't be able to play. How do you cope with this? How do we talk to our high school and our college students and what are some suggestions that you have? Well, I think that's an excellent question because one of the things that it goes to is that historically, and there was some, a little bit of change in this in the last few days, but the pandemic seems to be focusing its more lethal effects on older folks. Right. So there's sometimes, I think, a belief among younger folks that there's not so much of an impact for them, which right. is, of course, inaccurate. We it know is. that from the data coming out of Italy, and we know that just in terms of the potential spread. In fact, did you see the CDC's latest report that 40% of the hospitalizations now related to the COVID-19 virus are actually, I think it's between the ages of 18 or, uh, 
remind me, Thomas. Twenty to fifty-four. Twenty to fifty-four. Yeah, I did so say it that. is the young population that represents forty percent of the ho That's hospitalizations. Right. right. So you're right. We've been concentrating on the elderly that might have a compromised immune system. Um, but we have to we have to concentrate on all segments of yes, the population. Yes, we do. And I think that's part of the conversation with younger people is that yes, this is disrupting your life like it's disrupting everybody else's. Right. But that first of all, everybody's at risk. But beyond that, and I think this is you know it's interesting, Mayor. I think this is a conversation that is almost easier to have with folks in their late teens and early twenties. Sure. Um, there are times when the normal routine of life gets disrupted, and those are the times when you have to take heroic action. And part of the heroic action for this generation, for the younger generation, is to say, you know, we need to kind of do our part in this. And part of that is there's rites of passage we're not going to get to have. Sure. There are things we're not going to get to do because of what's going on, but sure. we want to respond the right way. We want to respond to the call. Folks in their late teens and early 20s can hear that message probably better than some of us who are a little older can. Sure, sure. So I think that's the discussion. You know what? And We should throw down the challenge. Those families that do have graduates that are going to be missing out on a lot of the springtime activities, mm -hmm. Let's use this time now um, to plan for maybe a new nice. tradition or a new type of right. celebration, you know, once we get over this hurdle and we start having society re-enter and, right. and, you know, and, and being able to move forward. I do think it's a great opportunity to celebrate those graduations. But exactly. For the immediate, we do need to concentrate on the mental health. Again, you know, it could lead to depression, sadness, yes, absolutely. Um, all different types of um, um, side effects because you're not going to be able to participate. And on top of that, can't even hang out with their friends right now. That's I mean, right. we're encouraging everybody to stay at home. Yeah, tough for kids, although the good thing is because most kids are so adept at the use of social media, as long as they can keep in contact, they just can't keep in contact physically right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and it is great that we have social media. Again, City of Tallahassee, we are, um, we are proud of our municipal services. Mm -hmm. We are committed to keeping everybody's utilities on. Nobody's gonna lose electricity during Excellent. this. We're going to work with everybody. You know, it's not like a storm event where we lose a ton of power. Right. So uh, you should still be able to communicate and stay in touch with everybody. Well, and I'll tell you, if I, if I can just jump on that for a second, people don't think about it. But doing that, making that commitment that people can stay in touch and that power can stay on, that actually is a huge impact, positive impact for the mental health of this community because when you are doing social distancing, when you're practicing social isolation, you really want to be able to keep those platforms alive where people can have contact with each other. So that's a big step for mental health around here. Sure. Got another great question that just came in. Keep the questions coming. We will stay on as long as there are questions. The question is, staying home is triggering my depression. What can I do to stay in line with the CDC guidelines but not get too depressed? Okay. What are some creative measures here, Jay? Okay, this takes us back to the conversation we were having earlier, which is that when you're staying home, the default is either I'm on vacation or I'm sick. And when you're sick, you're spending a lot of time doing nothing, watching TV, waiting right. for your body to heal itself. From, for folks who are staying home, not because they actually have an illness, but because they're at risk or they're trying to avoid risk factors, yeah, that can absolutely trigger your depression because you're not having the inputs that you're used to. So the thing to do, I think, is to figure out a way to replicate those inputs. And that has to do with scheduling, keeping a uh, normal routine, maybe one that you hadn't thought of before, but you'd mentioned exercise. If there's an exercise routine, a reading routine, a communicate on social media routine, and that stuff gets scheduled to almost replicate a work day, I think that makes things much, much easier. I'd also, I can't recommend enough, especially for somebody whose depression is being triggered, reaching out, even if you don't feel like it, sure. to your friends and family on social media. Keep that input coming, because one of the things, and not to, not to get too science guy on anybody here, but one of the things that happens with depression is that the level of serotonin, which is a neural transmitter in the brain, starts to drop. And one of the things that 
is the, the physical correlate of feelings of depression is that your serotonin levels are going down. Well, the way to get your serotonin levels up is exercise is a great way and communication is a great way. So I think it's structure, including exercise, and a lot of communication with the outside world. I think that's how you do it. I think it's great. And I'm going to give a plug here in just a second. I'm going to get there. It's going to take me a okay. while. Another thing that I would suggest that we're trying to get creative in the daily household is try something new. All right, yes. so let's think of the benefits that we have. Yeah, we're at home right now and everything, but you, but, but you do have communications. Most people have a cell phone or a computer, mm -hmm. definitely internet access of some type. Hey, learn a new language. Nice. Learn a new skill. Um, right. We've got a piano. We've started taking piano lessons. My boys have. I grew up playing mm -hmm. the piano. We're re-engaging. We're fine. You can find just about anything on Excellent online. Idea. You know, how do you play the guitar? How do you learn a new language? You know, really get creative and also have some fun. So my uh, my youngest uh, is the artist of the family. He's okay. great. So we have a bunch of rocks at the house uh -huh. that we're painting because he loves to paint the rocks and Excellent. you know eventually we'll leave them in the parks. You know that's right. that's a thing and and he loves it. Uh, we're talking about shooting a movie on the iPhone. Oh, he, nice. he wants to shoot a no, movie. He's got a bunch of Godzilla to toys and everything. Out. But while he's having a great time, uh, and I'm having a great time with Jenny, Tommy, and Henry, right. and we're doing it together as a family, I also realize that this is bringing structure That's right. of a new activity in. That's right. And it, it allows us to concentrate and focus on something else. So, you know, we talk about Okay, from 9 to 10, we're going to write the script. Right. And from 10 to 11, we'll develop the scenes. Right. And then from 11 to noon, we'll take the, the first stab at, at trying to shoot the film, you know, on right. the iPhone and then production. There. And so we're laying out a complete schedule. Another thing that we're going to attempt to do, this is probably not going to end well, but we're going to try to build a go-kart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. We're going to try to build a go kart. <laughs> Just use it, you know, old school, I, using scrap wood. I can't and the worry whole about you guys, but okay. Know. It's going to be great. You know, just something that we can do together. Yes. It's the same type idea. We're going to, you know, design it um, and, and get out the old school saws and everything and, and try to build it together. We'll wait and see. You know, stuff that, that I did growing up, you probably did growing up, a lot of people did. But again, we're doing something together. Right. We're having great family time. It's kind of keeping our mind off of everything else. Right. Um, and it gives us activities, but it gives us structure, and it gives my kids structure. And quite act, you know, quite honestly, it's keeping us active. Right. Um, my body positively, re you know, our bodies positively yeah. respond to activity. We're not mm -hmm. just sitting on the couch. So this is where I was getting to. One of the things that the city is doing, we just launched a new campaign. We want to hear the positive stories out there. Oh, there love is, it. There is so much negative going on. That's right. There's so much fear and anxiety going on. We want to hear the positive stories. So we're starting a new campaign called TLHCanDo.com. TLHCanDo.com. Send us your stories of it. your creative projects you've done with your family or mm -hmm. something funny that's been going on or something new that you're trying. TLHCanDo.com. Dot com. So it plays right into, hey, if you're starting to feel your depression coming on, you know you've got to, uh, you know you, you, you've got to change it up a little bit. Right. You're absolutely right. Communicate with friends and family. Mm -hmm. Communicate with your professional, uh, your right. therapist, absolutely. or your counselor. Um, if you don't have someone and you want to talk to someone, you can call the Appalachia Center at 800-312-0774, 800-312-0774. Three four two zero seven seven four. You can call two one one, two one one of the Big Bend, but also record those great stories. I like that. Send them in the tlhcando.com. Hey man, this is brand new. I'm I'm sure you know there, there'll be a Tallahassee proud T-shirt or something <laughs> on the other side. We haven't gotten that far. <laughs> you know, we're just trying to think of the creative ways. I think that's great. One thing I love about this community, though, man, we are Tallahassee proud. We're Tallahassee strong. And I can't wait to hear of yeah. all the positive stories that come out of this. That's for sure. We got a couple more minutes, possibly. Actually, I'm getting the wrap up sign. Jay, I want to thank you for coming in today. I mean, we kind of decided on the fly yesterday, mm -hmm. but you and I both agree that uh, you know during these interesting times of the Corona pandemic, while we're concentrating so much on physical health, we have to have this conversation about mental health, and we have to have this conversation about 
how do we talk to our families, specifically our kids. Together, we're going to make it. I know we are. Folks, I want you to be safe. I want you to remember all of the physical health uh, guidelines that we're pushing out. The city, the county, healthcare professionals, we're all in this together, and we're going to do everything we possibly can. Dr. Jay Reeve of the Appalachia Center, great resource, great hospital. Let me give those fund numbers one more time. For the Appalachia Center, 800-342-0774, 800-342-0774, or just call 211, 211 of the Big Ben. Thanks for joining us. We certainly do appreciate it. Jay, you're the man. Thanks for coming in. You are the man. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for joining us.